Okay, here's the start of my new bar. Light bar, using the same bar stock I used before. I already have my G11 pieces cut out. Getting ready to install those. Changes to the bar this time. One of the major changes is I'm using um, new wire connectors. Uh, they are safe touch wire connectors, rated at 600 volts DC. I'm going to be wiring my main harness into one side of those, my LEDs into the other, and my PLED across the terminals. And I'll get into the PLED later. The uh, reason for the terminals is to make it easy to replace the LEDs. All I have to do is unscrew the LED and pop it out, put a new one in if I have to. So. Okay, this is the capped on tape. It's two inches wide. That label, I don't know if you can read it, says thermally conductive silicone coated capped on tape with liner. These are three foot sections. I tried to order a larger roll, but they had back ordered it and I didn't want to wait, so I'll just do this bar in two three foot sections. And it's tape. It's going to roll it right on the front surface. First, I'm going to run a piece of uh, emery cloth over the um, holes that were drilled for the G11 just to make sure there's no rough edges. Okay, here's the first piece of cap on I installed. Three feet. I wrapped it over the edge by my my connectors just to get a little extra protection on the edge. And I rolled it across the bar onto the other edge. This is two inches wide. This bar is an inch and a half, so. That's going to give me a complete thermal, con thermally conductive material to the heat to the uh, heat sink, which is my aluminum bar. However, this has a dielectric strength of 7,000 volts before breakdown, so this will ensure that no LED can short to the um, the heat sink. Just can't happen now. So install the next piece and go on. Okay, there's the bar. It's finished. It's wrapped with capped on tape. I overlapped the seam. It's very thin, so it conforms nicely to the ridges and everything else in the bar. Pretty strong stuff. So, LEDs will never come in contact with the metal bar, but are fully insulated and have uh, excellent thermal conductivity. I'm going to install my G11 now and proceed. Okay, here's a picture of the bar all assembled, all cleaned up. And now you can notice the great little pocket that's completely dielectrically electrically insulated from the heat sink and ready to receive the LED I'm going to glue the LED right to the Kapton tape which will be fine um, then I'm going to pot it like I did my anybody familiar with my last build I potted it in the last build with epoxy this time Okay, on to my newest experiment, and I hope this works. I don't know if you can see this. This is a PLED. Yeah, it's not going to focus. Okay. A PLED is a shunt which will allow current to bypass the LED if the LED shorts out. I have information on these on my posts, so I'm not going to bother describing it now. Now, obviously, this is a surface mount. I'm going to attempt to modify this so that I can use it in my jumper between my terminal blocks. So, let's see if we can do some microsurgery, solder some leads on this, heat shrink it, and see if we can get a working device. Okay, I connected some leads to the PLED. I'm going 
to uh, put some heat shrink tubing around it and see how it looks. Okay, so that was a little tedious, but now I have 32 uh, PLEDs. I don't have, this was my first try here at them, and there's a couple things I don't like about them. Uh, I don't like the heat shrink tape that was used here. It's cheap stuff, and, uh, although these are probably, they probably work fine. I made 32 new ones as I developed my technique. It was pretty tedious, but once I developed the technique, it went really fast. Um, and they're really nice and soldered well, and the tabs are out on them, so... Tomorrow, seeing as today's Sunday, I'll uh, order some new um, heat shrink tape, some of the good stuff, and I'll heat shrink those. So what really is going to happen here is I turn the bar over, which is a little bit different from my other design. This is actually the top of the bar. This is the back side of the bar. Where, so if you're looking at the light head on in the tank, you don't see this side, and obviously it's the top. What you see is this side, and there's going to be nothing here now, no wires. This is going to be one of those channel fillers that I used before. And then, of course, the bottom what's going to have the LEDs. So now on the top, I'm going to spray this with a silicone based insulation for a high for, um, for voltage and that stuff is called be right back hang on okay I'm back and this is the stuff it's called SR fine L coat it's silicone conforming coating it's UL approved and recognized silicone based and what it does is it will give you a dielectric barrier wherever you spray it. It's usually used for PC for boards, for high voltage boards. Um, I'm going to spray it. I'm going to mask off this channel. I'm going to spray it all inside this channel here and on the outside where um, my wiring is going to go. And I'm going to do this side just for the heck of it too. Okay, here's a finished PLED with the heat shrink tape on it. I'm sorry, heat shrink tubing on it. All nice and sealed. It's probably hard to see. I don't know if you can actually see it. Nice and solid, tight. I used... Uh, let's see, you probably can't read that label either, but it's called... Uh, it's uh, insole tab, it's CSAOF T 600 volts um, at 105 degrees C insulated PVC shrink tape clear so I got 32 of those to do and I'll be ready to start wiring my bar okay here's my LED bar with the PLEDs mounted and the wiring all done on the back side into the power strip and into each terminal each LED has a PLED jumper and it was a little more tedious than I had expected but once you get the rhythm it goes pretty quickly so this bar is ready for LEDs and that's a job for tomorrow I'll be hooking up the LEDs wait until they dry wiring them in to the terminal strips then I will uh, test the light function I have a 50 volt driver which should drive 16 LEDs easily and then I'll test the blues, I'll test the whites and then I'll start experimenting with the PLEDs by simulating a um, a short by disconnecting LED wires. Okay, well I'm back, and I know I jumped ahead of everybody here, but I had a lot of wiring to do. What you see here is my bar, completely wired up. All my LEDs are mounted. The LEDs fasten nicely to the capped on tape. 
the heat sink, heat um, uh, the uh, adhesive. Everything is wired into each terminal strip. At the bottom of each terminal strip is my PLEDs, which run across the terminals parallel to the LED. Now what I did here, I have my standard plug that will go to my light fixture, but I have a much smaller power supply. This is got a maximum of 54 volts DC. It's dimmable. And I have my little rapid LED dimming module here. But I can't run both strings at the same time, so I made a jumper that allowed me to run each string independently. Just unplug the driver and plug in the blues or whites. So first thing we'll do is we'll fire up the blue the whites. Show you that the whites light up nicely. Okay, there we go. Let's give ourselves a, a zero to ten volts. Alright, so we've got our whites lit up. I know you can see that. It's got dimming control full brightness down low I tested every connection for any shorts of course there are none I checked the bar for straight voltage there's no straight voltage either so that is the bar now comes the interesting innovation so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick an LED let's take the first one after this middle standoff right here I'm gonna shut off my power supply I'm going to disconnect the LED's lead. If I can do this with the camera in my hand. Hang on one second. And I'm going to pull out the lead. Which is going to simulate a dead short in this LED. Now normally in a series power going through would stop at this point here and not be able to go on. Now this is where these PLEDs should take over. Let's plug the light fixture in. Oop, got to plug in my 10 volt power supply too, sorry. And here's what we have. All the LEDs are lit up except the one I disconnected. So the PLED has effectively bypassed, has sensed that the um, LED is no longer working or shorted, and it's picked up the load. And that's this little gadget right here. And it's only running at 1.1 volts, and it's picking up the full current load, and we're going to maximum one amp. so. There's very little heat dissipation, very little heat because it's only running at 1.1 volts. And that's it. Well, here's the finished light bar. I don't know if we can get a shot of this here. That's the new bar in the back there. Running with the PLEDs. See, there's no wires coming out of the front of that like the other bars there are. So that's it. My bar's finished. It's hanging. Looks great. Tank looks good. Everybody's happy. So I uh, certainly hope you got some good information out of this uh, version 2 build of the light bar.